The origami pamphlet is simply a spectacular folded structure. It's versatile, it's easy, it's uh, something that just about anybody can do. Children of all ages can make this. Adults love making these in additions and or in single books. What makes it one of the things that makes this so lovely is that it's got these double pages, so that if you want to do something that say has a lot of gluing on it, so if this has all gluing on it, all you have to do is glue on the one side of the piece of paper. You don't have to worry about glue migrating to the back and messing things up because this book just folds up and has those double pages so you don't have to worry about the other side. The same thing goes for uh, for markers. You can you can use markers to your heart's content on these and if the markers bleed through the paper well it doesn't really matter because double pages. What's also nice about this is if you have something you really like, like I really like this one. What if I want to make copies of this? No problem. I'll just put this on the copy machine, make copies, and then I can have lots of copies of this. So uh, there's a lot more to say about it, but what I want to do is I want to show how to make it. I'm going to I'm going to show it three times. One will be with scissors, one will be without scissors, and the other will be showing a different uh, a different folding method that will end up with a slightly different kind of book that. Uh, it might be confusing, so I want to show show that to you. So, first off, I'm just starting with regular copy paper. Now, this first this first fold is it's important to keep in mind that the first fold is to fold it so that it's long and narrow. Make sure you fold it nicely in half. I like to put my fingers on one side, hold it in place, and hold it in place slide my fingers up and down. Okay, that's the first fold. Second fold, is, the second thing is to open it up and fold it in half. I call this a book fold. The first one I call a narrow fold. This one I call the book fold because now it's in the proportion that looks like a book. Okay, uh, if you're teaching this to children or if you are just learning it yourself, um, a term I like that I've started using a long time ago, I, I call this a banana peel fold because if you have a banana and you want to peel it, you just peel one side, right? You don't take the whole thing and peel it down or else that would break the banana, right? So uh, it's a good term to, to use because if you're working with children and they get to a certain point, you could say do a banana peel fold. If you've taught them what it is, they will remember that. So I, I've just folded down one side. I'm going to flip this over and do the other side of the banana. Peel it down. Make sure everything's lined up. Back and forth. This can be done with really large papers too. And it's really nice if you use uh, something that's even the size of uh, a typical desk. It comes out to a really nice size book. Okay, so this is what I've got. Uh, if I look at the side of it, I've got a letter of the alphabet. Looks like an M. I actually don't want an M. I want a W. W. So how do I get the W? Oh, just turn it over. Okay. The W is good because um, it stands for wings in this case. And my book has wings. See how that has wings? I'm holding it has wings. This is sort of important. Um, to notice because what I'm doing here with my fingers is I'm holding it right here on this line to make it have wings and that line right here is going to be cut just from where I'm holding it right to the intersection here. So this is how to do it with the scissors. I lay it down and I start cutting. Let's get my scissors right. And what I want to do is cut along that line and it might be hard to see in this with this lighting, but here's that line. Here's the important thing about this. If I cut it a little bit too far, that's okay. If I don't cut it far enough, if I don't quite hit this intersection, that's going to be a problem. 
So you really want to cut all the way to that intersection. And notice my wings are out of the way. See, here's my wings. We don't want to cut the wings. Okay, so it's just the, on the fold, right there to that point, and even a little over if that happens to happen. Okay, so look, I haven't cut my wings. Here's my here's my uh, cut paper. Uh, I like to think of this as a as a uh, mount, mountaintop that's having a earthquake moment, and it's going to shake and shake and shake, and then it's going to split open. And there's the book. Now I might have to tighten down these corners up here, the the, the folds. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, and don't skip this step, just sort of like squish it flat, squish it flat, and then fold it in half. You might notice that there's a little unevenness on the edges, but don't worry about that. Once uh, once a book is has his content in it, no one's going to be looking at the edges. People are just going to be looking at the content. So a little bit of unevenness, that's just because it's a handmade book. Now let's say you want to make this uh, without a pair of scissors. Uh, and that's fine. And it's and using, using a notebook paper, even with the holes in it, Sure, why not? Okay, so there was that long narrow fold. Here's my book fold. I'm going a little faster this time because it's the second time. There's that banana peel fold. Flip it over. Second banana peel fold. Now this time I'm not going to use the scissors. I'm still going to find my W. Oh, there's my W, right? There's my wings. There's my line, which I'm also going to make a little darker here just because we're on video. And what I can do here is I can carefully tear it. I'm just keeping my fingers very close to the fold. If it goes a little bit funky, again, don't worry about that because once you have content in it, people aren't going to be noticing that. So I'm going to be making my mountain shake, open it up, and there it is. Okay. And there we go. So that had the holes in it, but look, look where the holes ended up in places that really, it doesn't bother me. Okay. The only thing kind of weird about this is the lines are going in an opposite direction then I generally write. So you can just make your book go like this. Turn the book, right? And write this way. So that's one solution to the lines. Why not? Okay, the third thing I want to show is that uh, sometimes you will make your book and uh, it's it'll come out in these proportions that I just showed you. But sometimes it'll actually come out in a whole different kind of proportion. It'll come out long and skinny, and you'll say, well, wait a second, how did that happen? Well, the way that happens is if, and you might want it this way, but you should know how to, the difference. Um, the way I just showed you is that you start off by folding it in half the narrow way. But what if you did all the steps correctly, but you started off folding it, you started off folding it the book fold way. Okay? This may not seem like a big difference, but it really does make a difference. So I did the book fold, now I'm going to open it up and do the narrow fold. Again, I'm going to do the same sequences of folds, I just start it differently. Okay, so here it's long and narrow. Now I'm going to do the banana peel fold in this position. Do you see how already it's taking on the proportions of this rather than this one? Okay, flip it over. Do the banana peel fold again. There we go. 
and I'm going to use the scissors, scissors, make my cut. There's my mountain opening up, and voila, now I have a little book that's tall and narrow. Uh, what's, what is also interesting about this proportion uh, is that if you use the copy paper, use notebook paper with this, you'll have the lines going in the direction that you usually write. So you might choose to make your book in this way. There we go. This one looks like it's going to be real uneven at the edges. Okay, so there you go. How to make a zine origami pamphlet. My favorite all-time structure.